जय गुरुदेव ओम सहना सह नौ भुनक्त सह वीर वही तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिषा वह ओम शांति 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 नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम सरस्वती चो जय मुदीर शेर आवर इनपुट हरिओम every every shloka was a wow today it was so so very beautiful i the my uh, personal take away was a beautiful new meaning of yoga where you uh, whatever uh, sadness or dukha whatever we called it is there at that time completely disassociation with that situation is a beautiful yoga and that also slowly slowly shanai shanai you bring it out like you are not that you are that absolute bliss sachit anand dhanyawad hari om Yeah, we started from this shloka. Yatha dipo nivasasto, nengate sopamas mrita, yogi no yatha chittasya yunjato yoga matmana. The word yunjan is used so many times in most of these verses to yoke yourself, to connect yourself. And shanaihi shanaihi uparame. you do it very nicely and gently you befriend your mind by yourself again it brings us back to that uddhareed atmanatmana so we have to do it ourselves that's an internal um it's a self effort that each one of us does and just like a lamp that is protected from the wind nengate does not flicker for the composed mind of the meditator who practices contemplation of the self this illustration is cited yatha nivatastah deepah na ingate atmanah yogam yunjatah yoginah yatha chittasya sa upama smrita so this itself it gives us a, a goal to achieve wherein you are um, you are so stable and centered within that you are like the lamp that does not flicker that is protected from the wind you know when we are doing puja and all that when you light a lamp uh, when when the lamp is very steady you have not put the fan or the ac or whatever in the room and there is no other external uh, breeze coming in the lamp is so steady just just meditating on that itself is quite um, i mean i was just observing that in the the puja room the other day and it is so so calming and it's so centering on the mind so just by watching an unflickering lamp just imagine what the state of state state of composure will be if we can yoke our mind to the atma to the atma vishaya and uh, not let it flicker with with whatever else it could be anything else it could be uh, 
uh, a thought, it could be a desire, it could be an emotion, it could be a memory, any of the other six levels. If you yoke it to the self, you're so unwavering in your mind. Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya yatra chaivatmanatmanam pashyannatmani tushyati yatra yoga sevaya niruddham chittam uparamate yatra cha atmana atmanam pashyannatmani Eva Tushyati. So, Yoga Sevaya by the practice of meditation, Niruddham, mastered, Chittam, mind, Uparamate abides in Atma, Yatra, when, Cha, and Atmana by oneself, Atmanam, oneself, Pashyan, seeing, Atmani in oneself, Eva Tushyati. One rejoices. So you don't require an external source to rejoice. You just rejoice in yourself. This is like that Apurya Mana Machala Pratishtam Samudra Mapa Pravishanti Yadvat. Not maybe not really the same thing, but but you are like the ocean. You, you don't need anything else to complete you. You are complete in yourself. You rejoice in yourself. Sukhamatyantikam yattat buddhigrahya matindriyam vetiyatrana chaivayam sthitas Yet that, that which atyantikam absolute buddhi grahyam recognized by the intellect atindriyam beyond sense perception sukham happiness yatra when I am with one recognizes cha sthitaha and being well rooted therein Tattvataha, from the truth of oneself, na eva chalati, one never moves away. You know, the problem is, all of us may have had experienced glimpses of this, but the only concern is that what, what is required is being rooted in that, so that you don't move away from that. That is the whole, uh, uh, the, the, the seeking and sadhana is towards being rooted in, in that state. So when one recognizes this absolute happiness, which is recognized by the intellect, which is beyond sense perception, and when being rooted therein, one never moves away from the truth of oneself. There is so much of uh, reassurance that, uh, uh, you know, emphasis and re reassurance that Bhagwan is giving here. Yam labdva cha param labham manyate nadhikam tataha yasmin stito na dukhe na guru na pi vichalyate tam vidya dukha sam yogam Viyogam yoga sangitam sanishchayena yoktavyo yogo nirvinna chetasa. Cha yam labdva having gained tata adhikam better than that aparam other labham gained na manyate does not think. Yasmin, in which sthitaha established guruna api dukkhena even by a great sorrow na vichalyati is not affected. Tam that 
Dukkha Samyoga Viyogam. Dissociation from association with sorrow. Yoga Sangitam, called by the name of yoga. Vidyat, may one know. Anirvinna Chetasa, with a mind that is not discouraged. Sa Yogaha, that yoga. Nishchayena, with clarity of purpose. Yoktavyaha, should be pursued. Is actually, uh, when Nana had quoted one uh, great pa patriot who continued to give his speech when uh, he got to know the death of one of his dear ones. No, the same thing happened with Gurudev as well. That is what came to my mind. He was actually inaugurating, uh, he was the, the consecration of the Vishalakshi temple in Kashi when he when he gets to know that his mother is no more. His mother passed away in Bangalore, but that is when he continued to do that, he continued to be in that event, in the consecration, that ceremony was continuing. So such examples of these great people um, give, us, give us the input towards this shloka, that nothing you know shakes them not even not even a great sorrowful event so that that stable that centered and stable stable one one gets to once you learn once you gain this yam labdhva chaparam labha Sankalpa Prabhavan Kaman Tyatva Sarvana Sheshataha Manasai Vendriya Gramam Viniyam Yasamantataha Shanai Shanai Ruparamit Buddhya Dhriti Grihitaya Atma Samstham Manakritva Nakinchida Pichintayet Sankalpa Prabhavan, born of thought, Sarvan, all, Kaman, desires, Asheshataha, totally, Tyaktva, giving up, Manasa, by the mind, Eva, alone, Samantataha, completely, Indriya Grama, the group of sense organs and organs of action, Vini Yamya, withdrawing, Dhriti Grihitaya, endowed with perseverance, Buddhya with the intellect, Shanaihi Shanaihi, slowly, slowly, Uparamet, may one resolve the mind, Atma Samstam Manakritva, making the mind abide in the self, Kinchidapi, anything else, Na Chintayet, may one not think of. Giving up totally all desires which are born of thought, completely withdrawing the group of sense organs and organs of action by the mind alone, with the intellect endowed with perseverance, may one resolve the mind in Atma, making the mind abide in the self, may one not think of anything else. Here, the Sankalpa Prabhavan. So, the reason why we get desires is because of Sankalpa. And the, the connection, connecting shloka is the Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangaste Shupa Jayate. So, you go on thinking about something, some object. Then you develop the association, the attachment to that. And then you want to, you desire that. Sankalpa Prabhavan Kaman. So this 
practically when you talk of uh, you know how to reduce these how to be in this state of uh, uh, of kinna uh, kinchi da pichintayet the moment we wake up the mind is given so much of input be it from social media whether whatever facebook whatsapp whatever there is so much of input that is going into the mind so many thoughts coming into the mind and that that would that would uh, when you continue when we continue to do this that would lead to probably desires sprouting up so as as part of our practice there seems we need to be a little restrictive about what the input that we keep giving our mind that is where that shama and dama come into practice so with viveka you you take what you have to take and then we will have to be indifferent to certain other things otherwise there is no way we can uh, you know in the seat of meditation get get to that center where you are where you are uh, you are centered and your um, you you attain that composure that is required isn't it anyone wants to share anything यतो यतो ततस्ततो चंचलम ऑलवेज इन अ स्टेट ऑफ फ्लक्स अस्थिरम अनस्टेडी मन द माइंड यतः यतः फॉर वट एवर रीजन निश्चरति गोज अवे ततः ततः from that reason etat in the mind niyamya bringing back atmani with reference to the self eva alone vasham into one's own hands nay eat may one bring for whatever reason the unsteady mind always in a state of goes away bringing it back from that with reference to the self alone may one bring the mind into one's own hands what comes to my mind is the uh, the the ocean with the waves the waves on the surface of the ocean are like the mind and its thoughts that are constantly in a flux there are waves that continue to be there on the surface of the ocean that's the nature of the the mind nature of the waves are to keep keep coming up and going down whereas at the bottom of the ocean there is only that stillness so bringing our mind with the mind using the mind shanai shanai slowly slowly very gently bringing it back to remain in the in the depths of the ocean ब्रह्मभूत brahma bhutam one who has become brahman enam this yoginam meditator he indeed uttamam the most exalted sukham upaiti hap reaches happiness indeed the most exalted happiness reaches this meditator whose mind is tranquil whose impurities have all resolved whose life is free from all defects and who has become brahman yunjan naivam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmashah 
सुखे न ब्रह्म संस्पर्श अत्यंत सुखमश्नुते एवं इन दिस मैनर सदा ऑलवेज आत्मान द माइंड युंजन कनेक्टिंग विगत कलमशाह फ्री फ्रॉम द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स बॉर्न ऑफ अधर्मा योगी द मेडिटेटर सुखेन इजीली ब्रह्म संस्पर्शम बॉर्न ऑफ कांटेक्ट विद और रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ ब्रह्मन अत्यंतम एब्सोल्यूट सुखम हैप्पीनेस अश्नुते गेन्स the meditator free from the conflicts born of adharma always connecting the mind in this manner easily gains absolute happiness born of contact with or recognition of the brahman what comes to my mind is what gurudev keeps saying in order to be there you don't need to do anything all you have to do is let go the problem is we go on holding on to so many things we hold on to our thoughts we hold on to our desires we hold on to uh, our uh, uh, memory we hold on to our emotions all you have to do is just let go and and relax then you come to the depth of the the being anyone wants to share anything before we go on to chapter 2 dr sanjay yeah yeah is an to gain spiritual knowledge is a desire that yeah you hold on to that desire sadhan that is the only desire you hold on that is why mumukshutva no that is the that is one desire that will keep you on the path okay so that desire you are you are supposed to have otherwise you would not be on this path number 1 and the like like it is said in the yagna in the homa in towards the end you drop even that stick that you used to rake the fire that last desire then you offer it it autom- it, it, it that is also offered into the fire of knowledge so till you reach your goal you need to have that mumukshutva otherwise there is no direction to your life no if you say drop all desires all other I... desires which are not not conducive to this path yes you drop thank you jai gurudev and i just uh, thought popped up and guru is like that finger who is pointing towards that goal so until you get that you you look at that finger and then your gaze will be at the goal i mean guru shows you the goal he is that finger who, who is pointing out to that goal correct we'll start with our chapter 2 so i'm just going to do this again this recognition is not an ordinary thing this is what to be in harmony with the world with what is to be done with the law of dharma that governs all karma is karma yoga yoga karma su kaushalam therefore you choose your karmas recognizing ishvara as dharma then your actions become a form of archana to ishvara 
This attitude results in antakarna shuddhi, purification of the mind. Once this happens, it takes no time at all for self knowledge, jnana, to take place. Since antakarna shuddhi is all that is required, all the steps have been completed karma yoga, antakarna shuddhi, and jnana. These steps are mentioned throughout the Gita and Shankara also mentions them repeatedly in his Bhashya. Through Karma Yoga, the mind is purified and when the mind is pure, knowledge takes place and moksha is gained. Karma Yoga, therefore, is for moksha alone. Here, the little clarity that uh, I wanted was why, what was the reason what was the need for meditation when you have karma yoga itself? But karma yoga is to purify the mind. Dhyana yoga is important to, uh, to still the mind, to, to yoke the mind. Otherwise, the mind is chanchala and it can, although it is pure, it need not be um, centered. Steady so the, the mind. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's steady. To steady yeah. the mind, you require the dhyana yoga. It's nishkala, nishkala mind. Nishkala. Yeah. For the manas pirata, you require. Dure na hyavaram karma, buddhi yoga dhananjaya. Buddhau Sharanaman Vicha Kripana Palahetavaha. Did we not do this? I thought we were in Shloka number 51, no? 51 or 52. I think we finished this one. Yeah. How does one give up? Papa Punya was done. Karma Yoga is not a matter of choice. Yeah, we did also this bondage, birth. Birth is bondage. Liberation is not after death. You have to get it in this life. Yeah, we are here, I think. Yada te moha kalilam buddhir vyatita rishyati tada gantasi nirvedam shrota vyasya shritasya cha. Yada, when te your buddhi intellect moha kalilam impurity of delusion vyatita rishyati crosses over tada then shrota vyasya for what is to be heard, shrutasya, for what has been heard, cha and nirvedam, dispassion, gantasi, you shall gain. When your intellect crosses over the impurity of delusion, then you shall gain a dispassion towards what has been heard and what is yet to be heard. Delusion is in the form of absence of discrimination. Viveka, the lack of discrimination, aviveka, makes a person go towards objects and not towards the self, the atma. The person's mind goes towards objects as though they are going to take him to the atma. Even though the solution to my problem is myself, I think of it as being elsewhere, outside of me. There is no greater delusion in this world than wanting a solution to a problem that is centered on the I 
and expecting the solution to be outside of the eye. This great delusion, Mahamoha, is due to a lack of understanding of what I am about, what the world can give, what my problem is, what I really want, and so on. The impurity, Kalila, of this delusion is what is given up by discriminating between the Atma and the Anatma. Atma Anatma Viveka. The verse goes on to say that when your mind is no longer under the spell of moha, you gain this passion, vairagya, with reference to what you have heard and what you are what you have yet to hear. You have heard about a lot of means and ends. These are shruta. They are all on your list of things to do later. Then there are a few more means and ends that you have not yet heard about. They are to be heard later. Shrotavya. They all come under the heading of Shrotavya when you think. I think I should read this and find out. This passion towards what you have heard and will hear extends also to everything that is known to you. Such dispassion is really very beautiful. Supposing you decide, suppose you decide to gain self-knowledge, moksha. You have developed a great value for this knowledge and have completely dismissed everything that you have so far come to know as desirable ends. Because they do not solve your problem, you no longer have a value for them and have dismissed them. The only thing you want now is moksha. Suppose, however, someone comes and tells you that there is something more interesting than moksha. What will you do? One's dispassion can be shaky. If you are a practical person, you may have to give up self-knowledge. This means that your viveka is incomplete and your vairagya is shaky. Everyone has vairagya until something more interesting comes along. That is why they have said, I was wondering why they have mentioned shrutaha and shrotavya, what is heard and what is yet to be heard. So the dispassion is so beautiful, it's complete. The, 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 the understanding of dispassion is not just with things that you have heard, also that which you are yet to hear. So this is the example Swamiji has given. Someone comes and tells you there is something more interesting than, um, than, than moksha, then what would you do? That means your vairagya is only shaky. Similarly, our plans for gaining self-knowledge vanish along with our dispassion when we are confronted with something we think of as rosier and more promising than moksha. We give up moksha and go after whatever it is. This is a clear indication that discrimination is lacking. It is not that dispassion is lacking. Our discrimination is lacking and therefore our dispassion is shaky. I was once asked what I would do if, having devoted my life to Shankara, a new philosopher came along and dismissed what Shankara had said. I replied that Shankara was a teacher and I am not a Shankarite. I am a sadhu, a sannyasi in this tradition of teaching, sampradaya. For us, Shankara is only a link. He never said that he was starting a new philosophy. He was just a teacher, a link in the chain. This is reflected in the verse that all students of Vedanta chant daily, which is the Sadashiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Parampara. It says, 
I salute the lineage of teachers that begins with Sadashiva, which has Shankara in the middle, and that has my teacher as its at its end. There is no Shankaraism here. There is only the teaching and a means of knowledge, pramana, in the form of words called the Upanishads, also known as Vedanta. Suppose someone tries to say something that is better than what Shankara said or something that proves what Shankara said was wrong. For a person with discrimination, there will be no context for such statements because Shankara says exactly what is said in the Upanishads. They tell you that you are Brahman, that you are the whole. Who is going to improve on this? Who is going to dismiss it? No one can dismiss it and no one can improve it. Try dismissing that you are the whole. The teacher is very clear about it and the Shastra is very clear about it. That you are the whole is not subject to your dismissal because you already know that only through the Shastra can you appreciate that you are the whole. How then are you going to dismiss it? It is not available for any other pramana. That I am the whole is already established by the Shastra and that it cannot be dismissed is very clear. If statement, I am the whole, cannot be dismissed or improved upon, I cannot be enticed by a new philosophy that gives me a supposedly better idea about that gives me a better idea about myself. Already the Upanishad has given me the last word. It says I am limitless. I am infinite. I am Brahman. I am the whole. I am all that is there. Who is going to improve on this? No one can improve Satchit Ananda. Nor can anyone dismiss it because it is myself. There is nothing better possible. Anything that you are going to come to know later will not disturb your dispassion either. You will have the same dispassion towards what you come to know in the future as you have towards what you know now. Whatever comes will be from the world, which has no independent existence apart from Brahman. Nothing can come, out, come from outside the world and nothing more can come from Brahman because it is one, Eka. Knowing this is what is meant by Viveka, discrimination. Yeah, so these, these words, you know, that uh, I am limitless, I am infinite, I am Brahman, all those things like you can meditate, meditate upon, you know, like um, <clears throat> that, that we have two ways of meditating. One is like you can chant or deity, you, you choose the Devata, the other one is this where the work is so that is that that one is like like this like i am the whole like a purna or something like that which is true why why viveka is important here is because uh, otherwise yeah. the shaky mind can can latch on to something you know, some other new idea that is cropped up. So in order to yoke the mind to, to the words of the Shastra, because that, that is the ultimate. We have learned in the introduction to Gita that the Veda is the ultimate source of knowledge, the ultimate pramana. So when, and the words of the Guru are, are, are the ultimate. 
So once you have the Shraddha, and for this to have, you need to have Shraddha. Guru Vedanta Vakyadishu Vishwasaha Shraddha. So Shraddha is again one of the six wells we need to have. So when you have the Shraddha on the Guru Vedanta, Guru and Vedanta's words, the Viveka is to, uh, to, to, to yoke yourself to this and not get shaky. Otherwise, your Vairagya can become shaky. Your Viveka can get shaky. If you say something else is better than Moksha, something better than self-knowledge. So that Viveka is to understand that this is the ultimate knowledge and uh, that you are the limitless Brahma that you are infinite, that you are Satchit Ananda, that is the absolute, that is the end goal. Jai Guru Dev Brahma, uh, yeah. maybe you are the better person to explain to this. Um, just now somebody said about uh, having thought on I am Brahman on, but uh, should that not be uh, just the initial thought and then let go because uh, the ultimate truth would be nothingness, right? Uh, maybe this you can explain. But as we take a mantra, maybe we can have that thought, yeah, I'm a Brahman. And then let go, right? Yeah, correct. See, it, it is a Nididya. What she was mentioning, I think Dr. Mara was mentioning was Nirguna and Saguna. Brahma. One, one thought, one, there are so many kinds of meditations, right? So one kind of meditation is where you, you think of a form and you go on thinking about, say, Krishna and Krishna's leelas and all that. You're thinking and contemplating on that. Even that is an initial step where for that period of time, your mind is not getting frittered away into the material world. Instead of thinking about X, Y, Z, you're just putting your mind onto one person, one, one, uh, I mean, that, that is the, 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 as per Shankara, that is the definition of meditation is where, uh, where uh, Vijati Vritti Pravaha Sajatiya Vritti uh, Sahita. So you bring your mind to just one kind of thought, one kind of a thing. That is maybe the initial stage. But as you progress, then you, you contemplate on the, the nirguna aspect, the satchid ananda aspect of Brahman. And you have to let go, yes. You, the, the, you know, when you think that you are limitless, you are space, you are beyond space, there is... You just take that thought and let it be and and then just relax. Otherwise, that itself again becomes a thought. So you take that, be in that space and then just relax. I think letting go is, is the key. Which is what we've been taught, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Because it is, it is more an experience. It's more, you're, you're just being. It is not like, um, you cannot objectify it. You, you just have to experience it. It is not like you think of an apple in your meditation. There are so many kinds of meditation that Gurudev also gives us where you, for, for the space meditation, for instance, you think of an apple and you think of the room, the place where you are, you think of your physical body. So all that requires, it's all thoughts, but you are slowly bringing your mind to, from getting frittered away out to the external, you're slowly bringing your awareness to different aspects. And then ultimately, once you reach that space where you say, you think of the space between, you think of all the earth, everything in the earth, the space, the, mount, the mountains, the rivers, the trees. And then you 
um, you know, the you take your attention to up, up until the moon, to the sun, the stars, and then the space, and then you become one with the space. So all this imagination initially is required to um, to yoke the mind. Otherwise, the mind is very chanchala. It can just, it keeps moving from one object to the other, from past to future. So in order to gently that shanaihi, shanaihi. So all our guided meditations, this is what is exactly happening, right? It is very slowly, slowly, the mind is like brought into the center. And towards the end, the culmination of the whole meditation is when you experience that being, experience that, that, uh, the, the, the calmness, the centeredness, the witness of everything. The nothingness, if you may call, is what you said. And then somewhere, I think all of us who meditated they come to that, that point where there is that stillness that you experience. Where it's difficult to put it in words, but You've experienced it, that you take, get that glimpse. So the whole purpose, again, when we, when we talk of Dhyana Yoga, we get those momentary glimpses, but keeping that steady like the unflickering lamp. Yatha dipo nivatasto, mengate sopamasmrita. So just like that unflickering light, if we can stay in that state throughout the day, that is what enlightened masters are. They are in that state throughout the day, 365 days a year. Even if a great sorrow befalls them, they are unperturbed. So all our practices are towards that. Yeah, there's some message here. Uh, Dr. Reno, you said, is it okay if we finish by 6.30 a.m.? Ah, I, because I had something at 6.30, so I was just wondering if it yeah. is okay. Or um, I, I, I would not really mind, but the thing is, by the time we finish our manana of uh, chapter 6 or whatever, the current chapter, Itself is about 6.20 or so. Sometimes it spills over till 6.30. So then we will not have much time left for chapter 2. Even now I know we've gone beyond 6.45 here. Um, maybe if uh, you, are able to access, you are able to access the videos, you can watch the remaining part of the manana. But I think, in fact, I was wanting okay. to suggest whether we extend to seven, but that will be too much. I mean, that will become too little, too extended. So maybe we'll leave it at 6.45, Dr. Reno. Yeah, yeah. then if I, no problem, I just talk to us. That's all. It's not yeah. it's okay. Then there, there would not be much progress on chapter two than that we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me just complete this paragraph and then we close. To yeah. It. Yeah. So anything, uh, yeah, no, nor can anyone dismiss it because it is myself. We're talking of Sachit Ananda. There is nothing better possible. Anything that you are going to come to know later will not disturb your dispassion either. You will have the same dispassion towards what you come to know in the future as you have towards what you know now. Whatever comes will be from the world, which has no independent existence apart from Brahman. Nothing can come from outside the world and nothing more can come from Brahman because it is one, Eka. Knowing this is what is meant by Viveka, discrimination. Once you do not have moha in you, when your values are very clear, when you understand the delusion of human pursuits, then you will discover in yourself a dispassion, nirveda, towards what is to be heard, shrotavya, and what has been heard, 
Shruta, whether it is from the Veda or from any other source. This was the point Krishna wished to make very clear to Arjuna in this verse. Nirveda. You will discover a dispassion. So just that knowledge, even the Tattva Bodh, the Atma Satyam Jagan Mithya and uh, that Brahmashraya Maya and from Maya comes the whole creation, all the Panchamahabhutas. Even just dwelling on that, that the Brahman is the absolute, nothing beyond Brahman is there. It is, it is only Brahman. Or what is there is just a veil of ignorance. Even this will bring us to that absolute dispassion and that we wake up. Anybody wants to share anything before we close? Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Om shanti 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 Jai Gurudev Hari Om Jai Gurudev Hari Om